This shouldn't take too long. Just some short stories I read by Clifford Simak, or Simak, I mean. I always said Simak, but from watching a lot of videos this last month where people read particularly the novel City by Simak, Clifford Simak, the science fiction writer. Uh, I think that's the correct name. I haven't heard anybody else say Simak but me, but I'll probably slip and keep saying Simak because I've been calling him that for a long time. I was... I, I wanted to read City, um, but because of my no purchase rule, which I've only broken a few times, uh, I wasn't able to get a hold of it. However, I did find on my Kindle a bunch of freebies, uh, short story freebies. So I don't know if that's going to show up there. Empire I have not read. These others I've read. I'm going to switch to this one. Cymac. <clears throat> Too much glare on that one. Here we go. A couple of these fit. Empire, I've not read yet. Don't know why Lee Braggett shows up there on my search. Uh, Hellhounds of the Cosmos. Project Mastodon. The Street That Wasn't There. And... The World That Couldn't Be. One of these, I think it's The World That Couldn't Be, is co-authored by someone else. Uh, is that the one? It doesn't matter, I guess. Um, no, it wasn't that one. Never mind, I better get this right since I brought it up. Uh, the Street That Wasn't There is co-authored by someone else. This is really, oh yeah, uh, Carl Jacoby, don't know who that is, I've never heard that name before. The Street That Wasn't There and The World That Wouldn't Be uh, didn't have much of an impression on me. The other two stories, Empire I have not read yet. The other two stories, uh, Project Mastodon and... And uh, what's it called? What's the other one called? The oh, brother. And Hellhounds of the Cosmos kind of fit in with uh, current book tag events, booktube events. Uh, project Mastodon is kind of an adventure story. It's about a project that involves mastodons. Let's see how I did that there. Uh, it's a time travel project, this military project where they, they, they end up hunting uh, mastodons and saber-toothed tigers because they're trying to build a military base in the past. Uh, it's a pretty gripping uh, adventure story, R reads very smoothly. The story I liked most of these five, though, is fits pretty well with uh, the horror mayhem, Hellhounds of the Cosmos. This story... Uh, let's see if it's going to open here. Remind me, it's written in the 50s. This is this is one of these TBE copies that doesn't even have any publishing history information on it. Taking longer than usual to open for some reason. Um, but it's, it's from the 50s. It reminded me uh, quite a bit of The Mist by Stephen King. Not the story, although I know I read the short novel, The Mist, because I know I read the the collection it appeared in, but I don't remember it at all. I, I, do, I, I did find the movie very mem memorable. And this, um, what the hell is it? And this story, Hellhound of, Hellhounds of the Cosmos, sort of reminded me of it, because the world is being menaced by... Um, these fourth dimensional beings, these extra dimensional beings, uh, Hellhounds of the Cosmos. The paper had gone to press graphically describing the latest of the many horrible events which had been enacted upon the earth in the last six months. The headline screamed that six corners of the little hamlet in Pennsylvania had been wiped out by the horror. Capital H Horror. Another front page story told of a terror capital T, in the Amazon Valley, which had sent the natives down the river in babbling fear. Other stories told of deaths here and there, all attributed to the black horror, as it was called. The telephone rang. 
Okay, so it's not the strongest. This is pro probably an early story. Maybe I should look it up, but it's not the strongest characterization. It's not the strongest of Simak's writing that I've ever read, but it is very effective. These these stories, these are all public domain stories that are easily found on Project Gutenberg or, or on Kindle. Um, if you look for if you look for the uh, author and then sort by lowest price first, you get these. What they are, though, however, they're in the public domain, but not for the reason that that old classics are in. I think the public domain is what is it now? What is the law now? It's like ninety eight years. I think anything after nineteen or a hundred years. I think anything after 1923, don't quote me on these things, don't correct me, no one really cares, but for a long time, uh, Congress, every year they would extend the length of the public domain, uh, really based on lobbying from the Disney Corporation who didn't want Mickey Mouse, the earliest Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie, to fall into the public domain. Finally, it was enough is enough. It's like, it's like a century. It used to be, I don't know, when they started the copyright in the United States, I think it was 17 years, and you could renew it for another 17 years. So it was something small, uh, you know, so that people could have uh, access to these books after, after the, you know, there was kind of trying to split between the rights of the authors and then the rights of the cultures to have access to uh, its own history. But, and the laws changed many, t uh, you know, many times they'd extend. They'd, so uh, a lot of these books you see from science fiction writers of this era and mystery writers like these, these Simak books and uh, there's five or six Philip K. Dick stories you can find on, on from the same area, the mid 50s and many other authors. You can find a few of their old stories for free on Project Gutenberg. <clears throat> because there was a period where you uh, got a copyright, not automatically, you had to register for it, I think, or but you could renew it, but you had to manually renew it. And so some of these writers who were very prolific or, um, you know, pulp writers, or perhaps they died earlier or whatever, they wouldn't renew uh, some, for whatever reason, they wouldn't renew some of the copyrights. So they might fall through the cracks, you know, they had so much work to keep track of, and they probably, and I think there was a small fee to renew them. So, like some of uh, Philip K. Dick's early stories, like Yonder Lies the Wub or something, I think it's called, um, fell into the public domain early. And there's other, you know, there's plenty of other exceptions here and there. So, a lot of times you'll see books on, um, on the Kindle that are free, they're, they're really not books, they're, they're mostly short stories, sometimes novellas. Uh, Simac has one called Empire, which looks like it's about a 100 page novella, which is in the public domain. And some of these times it's like an alternate version. This one, Empire, I think is from, this is the one I haven't read yet. It's, oh, brother, whatever. Um, having a lot of download issues and upload issues recently it has to do with the VPN and not using the VPN and I, I don't know if I'm being throttled because I've used a lot of bandwidth here on, on the Wi-Fi which has been very good in this apartment but anyway um, so that's how a lot of the, these turn up online so when you do look for old uh, um, uh, Project Gutenberg type public domain stuff that you can that is cross loaded up onto Amazon ebooks you see a lot of different people trying to repackage it like there's like a bunch of 99 cent Philip K Dick collections that have the basically the same six or seven stories that are out of copyright because of the they were he never renewed the copyright with different uh you know, some they've cleaned it up a little bit. I don't. Know, they have enough problem with AI books and everything now that I that I don't know if they're still cleaning up this, some of these a lot of these scammers. But you'll see all kind of different things. Like you'll see, you know, they're usually about ninety nine cents or dollar ninety nine or two ninety nine. You have to look at the contents. Um, I was looking for the Philip K. Dick one because that is one that's worth showing to people. 
if anything is. Uh, okay. Here's one that's like, I think this is like, uh, brother, this one. You can tell from that cover, that's like somebody didn't put a lot of work into that, into this collection. It's called the Philip K. Dick Collection, which might uh, indicate that it's uh, a lot of Philip K. Dick. It's not. It's these 13 stories. Now, if you look on Amazon, if you search on Amazon for any of those stories, there it is, Beyond Lies of the Web. I think that's his first published story, maybe, or second, something like that. Uh, you can find individual free copies of these that have the kind of generic sort of um, um, you know this kind of, this design of cover this this public domain type cover uh, you know and download them individually or you can save some time and pay a buck to somebody who put it together and group them all together. Um, and then you'll find like bogus ones where they'll do a really crappy design where they won't put a table of contents on it or they'll they'll say ridiculous things like the complete Philip K. Dick which means that all the f free stuff they could get a hold of and it's not complete at all or or just people some publishers just don't care they'll they'll you know they say 13 13 novels by Philip K. Dick when these are all short stories but you know, so you have to poke around. You have to really just um, have fun with it uh, and just be incredibly cheap like I am. And then, then it's fun to kind of dig out and see what you can get. Um, anyway, Hellhounds of the Cosmos, I started to talk about, works very well for, I mean, it's a science fiction story, but it works really well for Horror Mayhem Month because, uh, like I said, it does remind me of the mint, the... The Mist by Stephen King, which I, I wonder if uh, Stephen King had happened to read this when he was a kid. Probably not. It's not that similar, but there's these inter extra dimensional beings which are very terrifying. And these scientists who really don't have personalities or they're just basically names like, you know, Dr. Wood and I don't remember, remember their names now, or I guess they're journalists. And they're fighting these, trying to fight back against this horror, these extra dimensional beings that are, that are entering. Uh, so it's a little bit, little bit uh, Lovecraftian, a little bit um, uh, pulpy, and, and it's really not his best work, which is probably why he never bothered to renew the copyright and put it and do anything else with it. But it, it was, I still enjoyed reading it because I think the, the horror, the, the creatures, the fourth dimensional creatures, which appear only as three dimensional creatures in our space because we only have three dimensions to see them in, are, 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 are pretty effective. So I would recommend that story. Um, so I just wanted to ramble on a little bit about, <clears throat> more about public domain stuff and why some newer stuff, relatively newer, stuff that's only a, uh, 70 years old instead of uh, 98 years old is is on there too. I thought some people might find that interesting because I do get comments about that. And I'll just keep reading. Uh, another thing about that was that I'm the, none of these count on my 100 book challenge because I can't count reading an individual story as a book even though See, if, I, if I'd been thinking when I did my 100 book challenge, I would have called it the 100 file challenge. And I would have just read 100 unread files on my Kindle. But it still did reduce my... My... Yeah. No, no Lieto, unread. 1120. If you follow all my videos, and I don't know why you would... Uh, it was 100. Uh, it was 11:24 the other day, so those four Simac stories are off there. My goal is to count up to 100 uh, books unread. You know, I'm still working on that. I haven't finished any new ones since my last video, and also to get that number down to 9.99. Okay. Talk to you later. Uh, it's not going to stop.